much, uh, Professor Hinai and Professor Rasa, uh, for the kind introduction and um, also for the opportunity to be here today and to contribute to this uh, great uh, day of research today. So I think before uh, we dive into the topic of tandem collaborations, it's a good idea to introduce ourselves a little bit to the audience. So um, if you might to take this pointer. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, just a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Julian Kleine Bortmann, and as Professor Hinai already pointed out, I'm um, a physician in the Department of Neurology. I'm a clinician scientist, so I'm both um, obliged to clinical duties and to scientific research. Um, my scientific research is within the Clinical Neurosciences Department, um, in the lead of Professor Dingel. Oh, thank you. I hope that's better. Uh, and the lead of Professor Bingel. Um, I actually studied here in Essen Medicine and uh, I finished my dissertation um, in 2017 and since then I've been uh, able to contribute to some committees here in the medical faculty and uh, also um, I got the great opportunity to be funded uh, within this UMIA program uh, which Professor Hainai also uh, introduced nicely. Um, and I recently started a PhD program and enrolled in the PhD program in clinical uh, epidemiology and clinical research to enhance my research skills and to handle um, big data, for instance, and patient registers. Um, and my research interest, so this very uh, basic description, uh, is on the uh, interaction between pain and cognition. That's um, maybe a little bit about myself, and I will hand over to you for your introduction. Yes, thank you very much. So my name is Katharina Schmidt and I'm a psychologist by background. I um, did my PhD in Hamburg at the, at the University Medical Center together with Ulrike Bingel back then um, in 2016. And in parallel since 2014, I've been working here at the uh, medical faculty, the uh, clinic for neurology as a PhD student back then, but now as a postdoc. Um, in or is, yeah, since 2017, I've been a postdoctoral researcher, and I'm also very similar to Julian because we're working in the same research lab. I'm also interested in human pain research and specifically in pain cognition interactions on different levels. Um, beside that, since 2020, I've been the scientific coordinator of the CSC treatment expectation that Professor Hinai mentioned before. So I have a, yeah, Dual, uh, dual job, so to say. Um, also, in uh, this year, I finished another master in higher education at the University of Hamburg. So I'm also interested in everything related to um, university studies and education. Mm. And as Julian already said, um, we're both part of the local ethics committee here in Essen, and also engaged in. Um, Organizations such as the German Pain Society, there has been a newly developed Arbeitskreis, Jung. Arbeitskreis Junge Schmerzgesellschaft, so for the young um, pain community, and that's where we've been working as well. Yes, that's it from my side. And uh, before we go into detail, because as Professor Hina already pointed out correctly, we would like to talk a bit more about the tandem projects and the collaborations that we've been doing together. and which I think is a really great opportunity for medical and clinician scientists to co-work. Um, we would just like to show a bit of what we've been done in doing in the past without going into detail of the topic. But of course, uh, when we first started working together, uh, we both had our individual projects and we were just, so to say, regular co-authors and supported each other um, in different terms of the projects. But during the last years, this has developed into a more specific collaboration. For example, um, at the bottom right, you can see that we just recently published a study protocol because we're working on a bigger clinical trial right now investigating open-label placebo effects in migraine patients. And this is a perfect opportunity where we can work together hand in hand. Okay. Um, you've mentioned um, the term tandem collaboration quite often now. I'm not sure if that's quite clear what that means actually. So um, I think it's worth to have a look at the definition of the clinician, uh, clinician scientist and the medical scientist. 
The clinician scientist usually refers to someone who is uh, a physician or a therapist, has clinical duties, and is also obliged to research and some kind of uh, scientific work and interest within a healthcare environment. The medical scientist um, is a scientist or researcher uh, which has or who has no um, clinical duties, but is also investigating research questions within the healthcare system. And as you can see, it is quite, uh, quite filled because there are a lot of abilities and qualifications which uh, each position brings along. And honestly, it would be just counterintuitive to not combine these abilities to uh, some kind of a tandem collaboration um, or tandem project. So this is uh, what a tandem collaboration is all about between the uh, clinician scientists and the medical scientists. And to illustrate and maybe provide some examples um, for uh, practical examples for you, um, how to implement that easily into a running trial or into uh, a trial which you are preparing, we would like to um, show you some ideas of tandem collaborations and also advantages and maybe challenges as well and solutions during uh, an ongoing trial. Yes, and... Uh for doing that, we decided to guide you through the different steps of the whole process, of the whole project process. And of course, this starts with the conceptualization of the project. So already here, we can work together in a nice way and uh, complement each other. Um, for example, if you consider uh, steps such as funding, there might be different um, networks that we are both part of, that we can uh, both contribute to and um, benefit from. Regarding the study design, for example, for the clinician scientist, it might be more easy to consider clinical or patient-related questions and uh, important steps to consider when designing a study, um, whereas on the other side, the medical scientist stereotypically um, might c consider more experimental parts of the research question or uh, the study design methodological aspects, for example. Then in terms of the ethics approval, we can of course work together as well. We can co-write the ethics, um, the, the ethical proposal um, also with our different focuses on the different aspects of the study. Um, and of course we can share our experiences and competence together in a way that we can learn and benefit from each other. And when it comes to the trial conduction and the actual data acquisition, um, there are a lot of opportunities to uh, help each other and to allocate, for example, specific tasks to specific abilities. For instance, um, I'm uh, a physician and uh, might have access to a different or to a special patient um, group or cohort, so it's an easy, um, easy thing for me to um, recruit the patients, for example, and to include the patients. Sometimes it's also needle, needed in clinical trials to include patients and classify the disease, and uh, this might be perfectly uh, done by a clinician scientist, where, as Katharina already has mentioned, um, the uh, experimental processes and paradigms might be a good and suitable way um, to be performed by a medical scientist. So it is perfect to um, combine both qualifications and um, to yeah, perform the trial in a, in a timely manner and um, to have a time effective uh, uh, conduction of the trial, for example. Yes, and again, when it comes to the analysis of the, the acquired data or the interpretation of the data, we can, of course, share duties and um, combine our different focuses and approaches again, for example, um, or w which means that we can incorporate each other's knowledge perfectly here. For example, statistical approaches, and again, stereotypically, this might be more on the side of the medical scientist who might have a background in psychology, statistics, or biomedical engineering, for example, who might be a bit more firm when it comes to statistics in the beginning. Um, so we can then yeah, learn from each other and benefit here. Um, also, in terms of data management, I, I've personally, I've learned a lot from Julian within the past years regarding patient data management and um, 
yeah, the, the handling of, of patient data and also, of course, the interpretation of the data. So I'm a basic researcher by background, I'm a psychologist, so I'm uh, generally, or I, in the beginning, I was not really used to clinical interpretations of, of the data that we acquired in terms of clinical relevance, for example. And this, is, this has been something where I've uh, benefited a lot from Julian. And on the other hand, I know that um, I might be a bit more I have been a bit more into imaging data analysis. For example, we do fMRI studies as well together, and yeah, that might then be more on my side. So in um, putting this together, we share our we share methods, we combine our competences, and yeah, this has been, I think, a huge success. And these um, competences can also merge in form of. Uh, a manuscript. Um, for instance, there is the possibility to co-edit a manuscript or co-write a manuscript or to allocate specific tasks or specif uh, specific topics to one or each other. Um, for instance, as a physician, it might be much more easier to, um, to write some uh, clinical implications and to identify clinical conclusions of an experimental paradigm. Um, for a medical scientist, for Katharina, it might be easier to interpret uh, new imaging um, results. So this can be nicely combined and merged within a complete manuscript by co-editing and um, sharing the qualifications and the ideas one might have. Yes, and then um, taking this together, we decided to put another slide here covering the meter level. I, I don't really know how you want to call that, but um, taken together, I think we can say that we share, in doing these tenant projects, we, we share equal responsibilities to achieve the common goal, which of course is the project success, nice publication, and so on, um, responsibility towards the patients and everything. And, yeah, this, I think, is a huge benefit. Um, we can, of course, um, advance w our scientific competences so we can learn from each other very much, and I think we have already. Um, and so by doing that, we can, as a result, then advance also the scientific outcome of the project. So I'm, I'm very confident that the, our project outcomes are, are better as if we would have done it alone um, individually. Yes, and so... Also, another benefit is that by working together, we um, get a look, a closer look, or a connection to each other's networks, so the scientific networks, um, which is, of course, also beneficial for us for future projects than if I already have access to, to contacts and networks um, and resources that I haven't had before, just because we've been working together. Absolutely. Um, so. This seems to be a quite uh, handy approach to combine all these qualifications to attend in collaboration. Um, but of course, there might be challenges, but we also intend to provide some basic and practical solutions for it. So um, as you might have seen, I have... Uh, I've forgotten to mention it uh, within the publication process. Authorships are also some kind of issue, but um, there are quite good solutions for it. So um, it is recommended or it's helpful to discuss these authorships and to um, refer to the ICMGE criteria for authorships, for example, so that this should not be something which prevents you from uh, collaborating with, with other researchers in a shared responsibility way. Um, also, shared responsibility might be a great advantage, but it also might lead to uh, some kind of um, responsibility diffusion, but as well here it is helpful to um, allocate specific tasks to one and each other and talk to each other to handle this. Um, and the last one is the timing. This is both um, an advantage and might also be a challenge. So this is helpful to uh, talk about previously, prior to uh, conducting or pr uh, preparing the trial, um, and to agree on a specific timeline or to allocate, uh, allocate again the uh, specific task within the trial. So all these challenges can be handled some way and I think quite easily. So don't forget, collaborating is also fun, and uh, Katarina and I have uh, collaborated a lot and also shared some conferences, and I think we have also shared a friendship uh, during the time, so this is a great opportunity, and we do recommend this for all of you.
Well, thank you very much for this really um, clear um, description of, of advantages and challenges uh, in, in, your, in your area. And, and, um, and you really made it clear how, why it is important to, especially if not, I'm a physician too, so to, to work together with a, um, with a real scientist, I was called the real scientist. Um, but what would you suggest um, the younger people, the, if you have a med student now, when should I look and, and start and, and look for a collaboration? Should I, and, and how, how should I do this? Should I just start my clinical work and, 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 and wait and see until the department head comes to me and said, look, we have, we have a suggestion. Should I do it myself, go to, to, to another department? What do you suggest? I think um, it's, it's a good idea, always a good idea to stay open-minded and uh, to start at the very early points in your career to, um, yeah, to broaden your horizon and also get in contact with basic scientists and researchers, ask for help, um, collaborate with your peers. And um, I think there is no specific time point to, to decide now it's the time point or the right time to connect with someone outside the physician or the, the medical department. Um, I think it's, awful, it's always helpful to, um, to start to connect with, with people and medical scientists uh, in the field of, of research you are aiming to, um, yeah, to make yourself comfortable in. Yes, I can only support that, uh, what Julian said. I think we highly encourage um, all of our students medical students, PhD students from the very beginning on yes. to mm -hmm. connect with their peers. And I think especially um, if, if we think of the medical student who might not uh, have that much experience in terms of statistical analysis, for example, or data handling, this might be very helpful from the very beginning to connect with the PhD students or master students or other people in your research group and, um, and just work on projects together. And, and they are already learn from each other. I mean, our faculty offers a lot of um, um, yeah, opportunities and chances, and, and we focus on this. Maybe you want to um, um, explain some of the advantages we have now in the future. Yes, actually, uh, as you we mentioned, and as I showed before, we, we have a lot of programs here already implemented and, and are being, uh, other programs being implemented to help uh, tandem situations like, like you are. And I can only recommend you uh, to, to to, to get in contact as early as possible. And, and this day of research we are just all participating in, well, has the aim to get you in contact. In corona times, well, you know this is uh, much more complicated than any other time, but uh, if you like to, to get to know each other, this is the right opportunity. And, and in your groups uh, presenting or uh, your data, uh, you saw a lot of other topics. Sometimes the topics are really far off your own. Um, field of experience, but but still maybe you you heard about new um, methods or so that you are interested in, and then you already heard some individuals that you can contact immediately, and this is why we are here. So this is uh, the major day of our faculty, sort of, and and you uh, you both mentioned that you have to be open-minded, and this is another relevant topic for our faculty that we want you to go abroad to to have your experiences somewhere else in another group and Julian maybe you can <laughs> give us an insight on, on how to proceed proceed in this way yeah absolutely uh, I think uh, you're, you're aiming at uh, visiting other labs for example exactly. doing lab rotations <laughs> yeah. um, which helps you to, to get or to gain another perspective on something so uh, me personally I plan to um, to have a lab rotation and a lab visit in the US next year so this is perfectly uh, implementable uh, within the UMIA program mm -hmm. um, as you nicely pointed out so um, within my time of 100% uh, protective research time I'm able to um, um, to visit the, the US lab to gain more competence in, in epidemiology, for example, um, to learn to handle uh, patient registers, uh, which are yeah, a little bit more comfortable to handle in the US compared to Germany. Germany is quite uh, strict in its regulations during privacy, etc. Um, so that's a, a perfect opportunity to stay open-minded and to, um, yeah, to open yourself to, to other perspectives, I think. Yeah. Thank you. And if I might quickly add to that, this is also another um, benefit of this whole tandem situation because, for example, when somebody goes away for a certain amount of time or has clinical um, 
duties to, to uh, go after, um, then there is always another person who can keep the project running and um, exactly. yeah. be there for, for the patients and data acquisition or whatever stage the project is in. So that's another benefit of the, the shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. S something I really can recommend, we have now from our department, we have two people, very young scientists, uh, clinicians who are um, via DFG, um, a stipend, one of them is, is in Paris, the other one is, is uh, in the United States, and um, uh, both of them also work together with, um, well, natural scientists in order to, to also yeah. um, have the opportunity to, do the, to learn the clinical skills, because this is something a physician has to do. Uh, I'm from interventional cardiology, so you have to stay in the cath lab, you have to do uh, your rot uh, rotations and your rounds, in order to get this done, you should work together with someone who, um, well, who, who holds your back in, in some situations and who takes care of the lab in some situations. And the next time when you have time off, the other one can take off and, and, and focus on other things. So it's, it's, it's work hand in hand. And, and um, I think it's, it's crucial to, to, go, uh, to go this way and, and uh, um, to be successful and, and to have fun with this. So it's, it's always, you, you mentioned it in one of your last slides, uh, that it also makes fun. It's not only <laughs> hard work, so. Yeah, very important point, really. <laughs> I might add to this. Um, I would also recommend you to use the support structures available. So the, both the university and the medical faculty has um, perfect and excellent support structures for both medical scientists and uh, clinician scientists. So just uh, use it, uh, it's, it's available, it's out there, and you can just contact uh, the, the persons um, who are in charge of it, um, so, yeah, contact the university, the Science Support Center, for example, the deanery. Um, this is very helpful, but I just recommend it, to use it. Yeah, thank you very much. That that's a very good uh, summary, uh, and I, I can recommend to, to go on, on the web pages of the deanery and, and find the programs that might be suitable for you or contact us uh, uh, directly. So talking about fun, <laughs> well, I think we sort of have to proceed in our program. Thank you both very much for, for giving this insight and for being role models for the tandem structure we are aiming at, really. And, and now much. 